In this example, I'd like to talk about how to parameterize a given surface. The given surface is this elliptic paraboloid, z is equal to x squared plus y squared, with z being less than or equal to 9. Now, I'm going to attempt to sketch what this is going to look like in three dimensions. There's an x-axis, y-axis. So in the xz trace, this is going to look like a parabola. And in the yz trace, this is going to look like a parabola as well. Once we get up here, we're going to connect these with a circle, and we're going to mark off that this is taking place at z is equal to 9. So in three dimensions, this is approximately what our surface looks like. What I'd like to do is parameterize this surface. Now, if we were to look directly down the z-axis and look into the xy trace, this would be as though we're saying set z equal to its boundary, 9, and see what we see. Now, we would have x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. And as a result, we would be seeing a circle looking down from above, where the lowest point is in the middle, and then it slowly grows up as we go out. <clears throat> Now, as is the case for other um, parametric curves, parameterizations are not necessarily unique. So one possibility, one, wow, well, possibility, because z is defined as a function of x and y, what we could do is simply do a straight parameterization where x is u and y is v and go from there. So x is equal to u y is equal to v. Therefore, plugging in these two parameterizations, z would be simply u squared plus v squared. Now the associated region would be that uh, u squared plus v squared, excuse me, u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 9, indicating the interior of this circle. However, as is usually the case for things that are round, what you might consider doing is a conversion into polar. Now, in polar coordinates, this is where we would let x and y be converted into r's and thetas. We're going to try to stay consistent with using u's and v's, though. So, in my mind, what I'm saying is that r is going to be u and theta is going to be v. So, when I convert to polar, normally what we would see is x is equal to r times the cosine of theta. That's going to be u times the cosine of v. y, normally I would see r times the sine of theta. Here, I'm going to say u times the sine of v. Additionally, we can also think to ourselves, what then would x squared plus y squared be equal to? Normally, it would be r squared, or in this case, u squared, which means that as far as z is concerned, we can say that z is going to be equal to u squared. That would be our x squared plus y squared. Now, in this regard, since we've already made a conversion into polar, we need to consider what this xy trace would look like in polar coordinates. So u would be between 0 and 3, and v, we would want one full rotation on the unit circle. So both of these parameterizations will give us the surface in question. There isn't really an advantage or a disadvantage to one or the other. It's just two different ways to do the same thing.